Hey guys, this is Chris Mancola with the Mancola Group over at West USA Realty, and today I'm here with Evan Einhorn with Modern Home Lending. How you doing, Evan? Good. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Good. Uh, we are going to be talking about the current uh, housing market situation, uh, where things are, and uh, where we kind of been briefly, and where we are now, and then probably where things are headed, most yeah. likely, at least as long as nothing comes out of left field, right? <laughs> So uh, with that, um, Evan, um, we are going to jump right in. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I just wanted to kind of start with is, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of concern out there with a housing crash. There there has been, you know, because things kind of slowed, slowed down a little bit with rates and stuff. We've also got about 35% more inventory than we had this summer right now, which still puts us at about 15,000, which in reality is about double where a normal kind of market would be for our area. So, um, you know, during the crash, we had about 80, 80% 80 of an increase, um, you know, uh, uh, compared to where we are now. So what, what, what are your thoughts on, on that and where rates are kind of with what the Fed is doing, even though it's not a direct thing with mortgage rates and where do you see things right now and kind of where we've been and where we're headed with that? What do you think? Yeah. I mean, one, I like to just point out it's it's hard to predict anything, but we can yeah. talk about a few things. Uh, so as of this taping, it's November 1st. Last week, mortgage rates hit 8%, you know, for the first time in over 20 years. Uh, most of our clients are getting a little lower because we are more competitive, but on average, you know, official headlines, mortgage rates hit 8% on average. Right. Um I will and, tell you. And just to clarify that, can I just clarify one thing with that? Because I, you know, I think this is always misunderstood. So that's like an average what you'd see in the retail world, correct? Like the thing, the headline that you see on on the news or these websites and stuff, compared to what you do and compared to what you offer, correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So that that's that's the average buyer or average homeowner in America is getting over eight percent. Um, I'll say our average client is lower. It varies based on quite a bit, but that is the nice thing is when we see these headlines, it's like, well, we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but there are some clients of ours that are getting eight, nine, very specific situations. You know, a lot of our clients are getting less right now. Um, later in, you know, later today, we'll go over like four different ways that we're going to combat rates. But overall, the thing with interest rates is like, I remember looking at a study that took 10 different companies, including like Goldman Sachs, MBA, National Association of Realtors last year, trying to predict rates. And only one of them predicted rates would be even close to this. Yeah. You know, so I say that it's hard to predict, but at the end of the day, we know rates are going to go down at some point. You sure. Know? It's just trying to gauge, is it going to be three months from now? Is it going to be a year from now, a year and a half from right. now, two years from now? And really, it's just prepping our clients that, hey, this is a long-term game. You can't buy a house. I mean, you can. You can't buy a house now and then flip it for six months later without doing any work. You could do that two years ago. <laughs> it was great. There's money yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah. But real estate, I mean, it's a long-term game. It's, you know, if you're going to buy a house for yourself or your family or whoever and hold on to it, you know, it's an inflation hedge too. That's... I you know, the best you know what the best thing for inflation is a recession for inflation hedge. Well, <laughs> a recession is the best way to bring inflation down. But yeah, over over the long run, inflation's yeah. here. The right. best thing if there is inflation is to have a mortgage and have real estate because your mortgage yeah. doesn't go up, but real estate goes up. So absolutely, you know, inflation's here to stay. I'm not saying at the nine, eight, nine, ten percent range, but right. even if it's two percent. That is the nice thing is your mortgage stays the same. Rent goes up, home values go up, you know. So that's that's a that's that's those are the conversations we're having with buyers of hey, what's what is your short term? What does your long term look like? Absolutely. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. And I would just say, you know, uh over time, um, uh, and and I and I've got I'm gonna share my screen here just to kind of yeah. this. Really quick, really quick. I just want to show that again. We're not trying to talk anybody into anything, but uh, this is right off our Facebook page. I'll just make it simple and easy for you guys to see this. But you know, 
a, a, a homeowner uh, here <laughs> with their net worth is almost 40 times greater than a renter. So right there, that backs up everything that uh, Evan was just saying and that we, we always talk about, right? Uh, you know, there's really nothing where you can get your money back quite as quickly uh, that's legit. <laughs> anyway, that we'll, we'll, we'll do what this does. Sure, there's there's other things you could invest in like gold or whatever, but with real estate over time, you're, you're going to see, uh, you know, where you're getting the best bang for your buck, I th I, I think. Wouldn't you say, Evan? I mean, in, in general, for most, most people out there. Yeah, it's just, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a real asset. Yeah. So like these net worth, like I have heard people say, hey, this net worth, it's not right. Because if you're renting and you can't qualify for a house, you're probably not better financially. Like you probably can't qualify to begin with, but I, I joke around personally, I'm putting my, you know, looking at my personal situation, I joke around, I'm really good at spending money. I think a lot of people are, and I'm really good at investing money, but I'm not good at savings. Right. So for me, a lot of my investing is real estate and the way I look at it, cause I do have a few properties that, Hey, if I don't invest any money in the stock market or anything else, Every single year, my mortgage is being paid down. Exactly. And pr home prices can go up or down. Over time, they've historically gone up because it's an inflationary asset. So it goes up with inflation. You right. Know, you look at the price of gas. The price of gas is not where it was 50 years ago. The price of a carton of milk wasn't where it was 50 years ago. Right. So, you know, my home that I own is not going to be the same price 30 years from now. You know, so... That's where I look at it that, hey, I'm forced to save, which I like, you know, because if you're not, it, it's not easy to save money, <laughs> at least for me. Yeah. That it, I pay down my mortgage every month for my rental properties. My renters help me pay down my mortgage every month. And over time, the value goes up. So it's almost like a, I hate to say set it and forget it, but set it and you don't have to think about actively investing. It's like, hey, I bought this asset for the long run and I used a mortgage to get there. So that's the way I think of it personally. Yeah. And I help a lot of clients look at it from that way too, because if you're investing in the stock market and all that, like it's, you know, you're investing in assets that will go up and down over time and hopefully up over time historically. Right. However, you don't have the benefit of using a mortgage to buy it. You know, yeah, so using the bank's money to buy a huge asset. It's like you say, you, you whether you rent, or have a mortgage, you got to pay that in order to live there anyway, right? That, yeah. So it's a forced savings, it's a forced investment versus, okay, I do that plus invest in the stock market or gold or whatever, you know, or, or mutual funds or these, all these other things you could do. You, you have to do that anyway in order for it to have a place to live or you have a second home you're renting out that has to be paid in order for that person to live there and for you to increase your values there and have your cash flow there. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, it's, it's one step less, so to speak in a way, yeah. in, in a mindset uh, from that standpoint, yeah. um, plus the freedom yeah. of owning a home. And then you, you're getting the tax benefits. You're, you know um, you're, you're, you're getting the compound interest where you, like you say, you're paying down the balance, but the, 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 the values over time go up, you know, like we just saw in those charts and, and stuff. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, and I was going to say back to your previous question about, hey, where's the market going? Where's rates going? All this kind of stuff. Um, one thing, I mean, tell, you tell me on the real estate side, what I mean, because I know there's a trend as far as every winter, but we have been seeing more inventory come up. What do you see on the real estate side? Like, what did we see last year versus this year? So every, every year, it's kind of the same thing as, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, 2021 and 20, the first half of 2022 were, were different years, right? But if you go back to 2018, 2019, and you look at those years, um, you're, you'll see the same cyclical thing every year, where, you know, the number of homes on the market, you know, uh, you know, fluctuate the number of sales fluctuate. There's not as many people buying and selling in the winter. Um, I, you know, I, I always say we do get a little bit of a rush towards the end of the year, typically, 
but once the holidays hit, it's dead zone, you know? So fall, fall, you know, right after school lets in, there's like maybe a month, month and a half where stuff's happening. And then it just falls right off. So we're pretty much there where we are in November now. Um, so this isn't really like a surprise, you know, that things are moving slower, in other words. And that's what's making the inventory a little look a little bit higher because there's just less activity happening, right? From a, a, an annual seasonal type thing. Um, and, you know, in our market, the only exception to that might be Sun City or retirement community because a lot of those people will come out, you know, when it, when it cools down a bit um, in the, in the winter months and, and, and fall, a late fall and stuff. But other than that, you know, that that's kind of what happens every year, every year. That's the same thing. So uh, what, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Just kind yeah. of what we see. I mean, I, I see it in the headlines more lately. Yeah. Everyone's hypersensitive on the market. Rightfully so. Cause yeah. we had COVID pandemic stimulus coming off stimulus. Like there's a lot of moving parts. So, yeah, it totally you know, makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, I'm looking at the market more than I was five years ago. I mean, I always look at real estate mortgage and how the market impacts us. Yeah. But other than 2020, 2021, it is a seasonal thing. I mean, prices do go down in the winter a few yeah. percent typically. And it's not necessarily that like the market's crashing. It's, uh, you know, not as many people are motivated to move around the holidays. Yeah, I, I remember in winter. I remember doing the same conversations in the same videos last year. You know, yep. it's always the same. You know, I, I could reshow the charts, but I've, I've shown it a million times in our videos that yeah. it's 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 like that every year. And they might be magnified, you know, because we do have higher interest rates. You know, sure. like interest rates are higher. So when there's less demand in the winter, maybe there's even less demand. But on the crazy side, um, you know, on the other side is you know, there's not a lot of home sellers that are just automatically putting their homes up for sale. Yeah. So, just to break that down a little bit, you know, um, here's just one example and you could, you could maybe, uh, you know, expand on this, Evan, um, you know, all else being equal, Barron says in this article, uh, a, a homeowner with a 30 year rate of 3.5 would pay roughly $860 less a month on a $400,000 home than someone who purchased a home last week at 7.9, I'm sorry, 7.79 uh, mortgage rate. So, the, the, you know, that's from Freddie back the most, that was their most uh, accurate numbers and stuff. So, I mean, when, when somebody looks at that and, you know, they're like, well, but number one, there's people who have to move, right? Regardless, they're just, there are people who just have to move. Yep. Life events or work or whatever, they just have to move. Uh, my general rule of thumb is if you're going to be in a place for three years or more, the numbers probably make sense, you know, at least three, four years or more. Um, but when you break that down, the, the thought is, yeah, but I'm paying more, you know. I guess one question is, have salaries caught up? Yep. And we're kind of paying more for everything anyway and have salaries caught up, right? Mm -hmm. That That's another factor. What, what would you have to say about that? And and still, is it worth to buy, right? Because am I still getting those benefits we talked about earlier, I guess? Is yeah. The, compared no, to- I agree. I agree with you. I mean, there's lots of times where we help clients and they're looking with low down payment and they might be looking at a $3,000 mortgage versus they could go rent for 2,500. And right. that versus a few years ago where it was vice versa, where it's like, oh, my, my payment's gonna go down. Now we actually have to look at the the real value of real estate. And even if you're not doing it from an investing standpoint of, hey, that $3,000, if it's a fixed rate, which over 90% of our mortgages are, if it's a fixed rate, other than taxes and insurance, that's the highest thing you can get. And then basically, if rates drop, you know, there's the possibility of refinancing and bringing it down. Right. And also with rent increases that 10 years from now, 3000 is going to feel cheap. Yeah. Some inflation, you know, um, I can guarantee the rent won't be $2,500 10 years from now. So it's definitely a long-term game. Um, I'll yeah, go cause through. It, yeah. yeah cause, it, cause if you break that down, um, you know, yeah, you're paying, you, you might be paying 500 more a month, 
But if you're getting a, a you know a half a percent in equity gain, let's just say a quarter to a half a percent in equity gain, you know, without yeah, even I mean you paying down the balance and all that, yeah, right. You have four hundred thousand dollar home that goes up two percent in value, right? Which is conservative, which is less than it has over the last right. fifty years. That's eight grand. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not eight grand in your pocket now, but it is kind of like I said. I'm not the best at savings, but it's a four savings plan long term. Right. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Evan. You were going to pull up. I was going to, I was, yeah, I was going to say, I'll share, you know, we'll go over um, what we kind of talked about earlier, which is, you know, different ways that basically we can combat, you know, higher rates. And, you know, again, buying now versus later, that's a conversation that, you know, buyers are having with both me and Chris, you know, on the real estate and mortgage side and financial planning side, but different ways that we're working on it right now. Um, basically, there's some positives to this market too. There is a little more inventory. You know, I actually did see a multiple offer situation, you know, recently, but you're not dealing with every single property is getting multiple offers like we were a couple of years ago. Right. So it's like people were complaining then and they're complaining now with the reverse, right? It's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But it's nice. Cause you can, you know, if, if a home's typically, and it's all negotiable, Chris, you can attest. If it's, if it's not brand new on the market and if it's not under, you know, underpriced or what, whatever, like you can typically get the seller to pay your, some closing costs. Yes. Right? We'll talk about, we'll talk about buy downs on the next screen, but Different ways you can do that is some people, even if you're not putting 20% down, the seller can pay so you don't have to pay monthly mortgage insurance. Or they can pay so you can get a lower rate forever. Um, but what we have been seeing a lot is the temporary buy downs. Yes. And that's been huge. I like it because you can pay either extra to have your rate lower a little over 30 years, or you can take most of that and get your rate lower for your first couple of years. So, yeah. and, and it's not an arm, it's not an adjustable rate. Right? It's just like, hey, if you're gonna start it, if your rate's seven and a half in this situation that we have on the screen, and the seller is basically paying for you to have a lower rate for your first two years, you are able to start at that lower payment and gradually get into your home, you know? So gradually budget your home. So maybe you're starting at 2,200, then 2,500, then 28. If if you haven't refinanced, you know, in those first two years, your mortgage isn't going up. Now, taxes and insurance might, but this is nice because if you do happen to refinance before the end of your, you know, basically temporary buy down period, you are able to get that refunded to you. So, yep. Chris, I know we use this for clients and. It's, it's just, great. It's great. Yeah. I mean, look at those rates, guys, compared to what you're seeing on TV and, and online. Uh, look at that savings. It's huge. It's a great way to go. And you can always get out of these too, right? I mean, in other words, if rates do drop overall, um, they can go ahead and refinance out of these programs. Yeah. Too. yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of people that, you know, you still got to qualify, but as long as you qualify, rates drop. I can see tons of people trying to refinance out of this. And yeah. then let's say you refinance after a year, there's going to be money left over from the seller that wasn't used for the second year of the buy down. So, you know, temporary buy downs there, they can be a little confusing on paper, but once you understand it, sure, it makes sense. Um, yeah. Other couple ways that we can, you know, that we see first time home buyers, a lot of people don't know there's tax credits available, not just tax write offs or that kind of stuff, but you know, the, the income limits, there are income limits, there are purchase price limits, but in Maricopa County, it's over 500,000. I know you're mostly, you know, Phoenix area, Phoenix Metro. Yeah. Um, you can make just under, just over six figures and still qualify. And, you know, again, contact me for full information, but that's up to two grand a year in your pocket, extra refund. And then FHA made some great changes for first time home buyers. And then Conventional made a great change that no matter what the credit score is, if you're a first time home buyer, which I put it on the screen here, but Chris, do you know what a first time home buyer is? <laughs> yeah, could definitely uh, be helpful. <laughs> yep. It's anyone that hasn't owned a home in the last three years, you're a first time home buyer, which is great. 
Yeah. And for the for conventional, if you're first time home buyer making less than the median income, which is about ninety nine thousand in Maricopa, then you're getting the best possible rate no matter what the credit score is. That's awesome. Um, and then you know I do throw this out there because we do have some arms. Um, we track it depends on the day, depends on the week. A lot of second home and investors, if they're still looking, then you know there are some adjustable rates that do make sense. And then there, you know, last week we saw an FHA rate that, you know, we were able to save about one hundred and fifty dollars on that person's mortgage a month. Now, again, these are not for everyone. It's fixed for the first five years, but it is something that, you know, if you want to take a risk, which you know, most experts do expect rates to drop before the first five years. Not not a guarantee, yeah. but it it's a risk versus reward kind of thing where, hey, you know, they know, you know, they knew that they were going to be in the home about five years. They definitely wanted to take advantage of $150 a month savings. Sure. Um, and you can piece some of these together. Like we've used a first-time home buyer credit with a 2-1 buy down, you know. So there's different things that we can definitely piece together nice. to help with you know rates being close to eight percent <laughs> great well evan we only have a couple more minutes left here yeah. so um uh what i just wanted to point out was to everybody is um evan can run all these scenarios he can map everything out for you um you can you, you can talk to him uh you know about all the details of where you are now even if you don't qualify yet or you want to qualify maybe uh, for something different later on, he can he can run all those scenarios for you. Um, it's a good time to start uh, talking about that. Even if you're thinking about selling a home um, and you're not going to be buying all cash or anything like that, you want to talk to Evan first, kind of get everything mapped out before we go ahead and sell your property or or whatever comes next for you on that. Um, so I just wanted to get that in there. Also, right now uh, for our viewers, since we're doing a market update. We are in a uh, technically a seller's market, but in about a week or two, Cromford's saying we're going to be in a balance market. Uh, that's from the Cromford report. Their index right now is at 121.4. Um, our supply is at 58 and our demand index is at 71, all indicating what we've just been talking about. Basically, you know, we've got still got a low supply. Um, uh, 100 would be where, where we'd be in a balance Um and I'm excited for a balanced market. I mean, a balanced market means, you know, homes don't sell first week on the market, but homes don't take months to sell. Yeah. So if you're a buyer or a seller, it's 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 very healthy. Yeah. You know, long term for there. It's kind of nice. Yeah. It's so funny because right now, you know, uh, we could see a home go on the market and if it's priced correctly with the way rates are and the inventory and the area, every area is a little different, a town. Um, but as long as it's ready to go, as we say, you know, like it's it's cleaned up, it's you know marketable, pr presentable. That's uh, what you guys do. <laughs> not a, not a distressed type property that yep. you know, all the investors are going to want to jump on, but that that sort of thing, you know, traditional sale. Uh, th those will still have two three offers on, you know, e even today. Um, yeah. You know, now we get between Thanksgiving and Christmas, people are thinking I might want to sell before the next tax season, right? So another thing, just to give you a quick idea before we wrap things up, is uh, the cities that are in a buyer's market right now are gonna be uh, Surprise, uh, Mar Maricopa, Queen Creek, Goodyear, and Buckeye. So uh, with that said, any last minute remarks, Evan, before we wrap up? Um, no, I mean, it's more important than ever to talk to experts, especially I mean, the market's different than it was six months ago. Yeah. You know, so definitely reach out to Chris normal. or myself and both of us. You yeah. Know, Think to, to see how it impacts you. Yeah. Normal market, right? More normal. 